And now, the last in our series of classic chillers. This week, a story with a vision of the future. Corona by Samuel R. Delaney. My pa ran off to Mars Colony before I was born. Mama drank. I guess I just growed. When I was 16 or thereabouts, I used help out in a copter repair shop at St. Gable below Baton Rouge. One fine day, I reckoned to take this girl and some liquor and a little flight. <laughs> Wanted to go to New Orleans. Ended up inside. Should have gone to juvenile hall, but the judge, allowing I was big for my age, sent me off to growed up prison. Some terrible things happened to me there. I come out of there a changed man, I reckon. Tried to settle down with this here lady, only things didn't seem to work. I guess I still hit back when I'm frightened. Thought of heading out to Mars, like my pa, only the record, you see. So I come to New York and got a job at the Space Center here. Cargo. I do cargo. And, and there was this kid. Girl, little girl. Mm -hmm. Nine years old, who could read minds and wanted to die. And her name was Lee. And there was this singer, named Brian Faust, and he was the biggest thing in the whole damn solar system. Oh, my name, my name is... Buddy! Hey, kid! What kept ya? <laughs> oh, um, nothing, Bim. I, I was, uh... Yeah, somewhere else, right, kid? <laughs> Fact is, I'm 24, but I guess most people call me kid because, uh... You want to come over to Bay 40 and help haul down that solvent from upstairs? What's the problem there? What's the difference, kid? It's a job. I'm telling you, go do it. Hell, it's a damn lift again. Busted. I swear they're going to have a strike on their hands if they don't keep the equipment working, right? Ain't safe. You got it. Ain't safe. Say, what do you think of the crowd outside this morning? Crowd? You know, people. A lot of people. Crowd. Oh, a lot of people, huh? I've been down the machine shop since 6 o'clock, so <laughs> I guess I must have missed most of it. The Faust, you know? The music. The guy. Oh, yeah. People been talking. Uh, like, uh, he's something. Came in this morning, kid. You didn't know? I guess I heard something. That music, though, it... Ain't that sort of weird? Sort of, I guess. I mean, in your head or what? That guy talks to... They say Faust gets inside you, the music. It sort of... He can't explain it, what it does. But it sure does do something. Makes you feel that things are good. Hey, you ain't so dumb, kid. <laughs> That's it. Makes it feel uh, okay. And he's here? Earthside? Sure, making it down from moon to moon through the outer planets... Broke him up on the asteroids. Did Mars. They love him on Luna. Doing the Americas for a couple of weeks, then Asia. And that's his liner. And did we have a hell of a time. Kids, thousands of them. And people old enough to know better. A couple of hundred of them got out through the barriers. Don't ask me how. And you, you would have thought they wanted to tear the damn ship apart and take bits home. Could have sold the grid he walked on. <laughs> okay, let's get these mothers onto the hoist and get them down. Easy, Bim. Take her slow. Ain't got time for slow, kid. <laughs> kid, watch it. Out below. Ah! Ah! Back. Bim. Get me, goddamn Bim. it! Bim. 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 Buddy, 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 buddy. 
I reckon I thought I was about done for right then, when they took me into the hospital. I never figured I would ever see again. Only, it was just beginning. Cause, this little girl I told you about, she was waiting for something. Only right then, neither of us knowed exactly what. The ring of the sun, corona and thou size. If only I could reach out and not touch but see, walk near him, hear his voice through air and light, reach out and hear through, through. Well, they tell me she's getting better every week when I go and visit her. Pass the Oreos, hon. I know they're bad for me, but I just love sweet things. And anyway... Oh, you have no idea how we hated having to send her back to that place. They want to run more tests and... Oh, the things she says she sees. And she's so smart. Years ahead of her grade, only... Well, you know she tried to kill herself again. She's got scars on her wrists halfway to her elbows. What am I doing wrong? The doctors can't tell me. She's not even ten. I can't keep her here with me. Shut up! We've all tried, but that a little girl as smart as Lee can be so confused. Ayúdame! Ayúdame, por favor! She had to go back. I know she had to go back. I hate myself for it. And sometimes, because she can't tell me, I hate her. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> The wind in the willows, the secret of the ivory charm, the decline of the west, Spinoza, the four quartets, Nova, Nancy Drew, and... What are you doing? Not thinking. Uh, that helps? Naming your books? Sometimes, Doctor. You buzzed for me? It happened again. Mm hmm My mother in the supermarket. She was talking to a friend. That's all? No other... Very ordinary. Nothing worth noting down. How do you feel? Would you tell me what you were doing before... just before it happened? Streaming some music. What? The new Faust piece, Corona. Hmm, I haven't heard it. Now you've been scribing graphs, I see. Is this yours or from one of your books? I'm just mapping the algorithm. Oh. You told me you wanted me to keep a record as well as calling you every time I got an attack. Yes. I'm doing what you want. <laughs> of course, Lee. I didn't mean to imply that you haven't been keeping your word. <laughs> it's a bit hot in here, Doctor. Could you open the window just while you're in the room? Mm. I like to feel the air. All right. What do you think of the Faust? It's fascinating. He uses this amazing rhythm that sets off imaginary counter rhythms. Like imaginary numbers in mathematics, except that since you should be able to hear them, you do. And you create out of the template that he gives you. You know when Mozart or Coltrane improvised uh -huh. and everything took off? This is what they were hearing. But we didn't hear that. You know what Flaubert said about writing. You want to create music that would make the stars weep, but we can only compose tunes for dancing bears. <laughs> Brian Faust makes the stars weep. What did you feel about the song? Was there anything in the words that might have... His Ganymede accent is too strong. I missed most of everything. It's basically English, but the meaning lives underneath or around the words, not in them. In a way, the whole piece is an echo. I don't know. I've noticed a lot of outer planet slang in kids' speech recently. You hear it all the time. I don't. Uh, Lee, we feel it's best to keep you away from the other children at the hospital. You tune in most to people you know or who've had similar experiences. All the children here are emotionally disturbed. If you were to pick up all their minds at once, you might be seriously hurt. I wouldn't. You remember you told us about kindergarten? When you were four? 
You tuned in to the whole class for six hours, do you remember? I went home and tried to drink the bleach. I remember, of course I do. But I hear other things, other people right across the city. Look, let's talk about the music. You want to keep me away from the other kids because I'm smarter than they are. <sighs> I know, I've heard you think. That isn't true. Now, can we go back to... You think I'll upset them because I'm smart. You don't want me to have any friends. What do you feel about the song? <sighs> that music is more about silence than sound. But what do you feel? Uh, Nietzsche explains it all better than I can in The Birth of Tragedy. Hold on, I'll read it to you. The book's just over by the window. Oh, uh, Lee! No, it's nine stories! No! Let me go! Lee! Oh. Let me die! Gross! <laughs> Room 974, get a team here now! Let no. me die! No, 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 Lee, it's, it's not the way! Oh, God, Lee, isn't there any way you can understand this? Yes, you've been exposed to more than any nine-year-old's mind should be able to bear, but you've got to come to terms with it somehow. I wish there was more you I could... You can't help. Your thoughts are just as clumsy and slow as the others. How can you help me? I don't want to stumble around in all your insecurities and fears as well as my own and everybody else's. You think I'm a child? I've lived more years in places than any ten of you. Just go away and let me alone. Doctor? Get the window replaced and the glass cleaned up, please. Yes. Lee. Go away, please, all of you. They'll go as soon as we've cleaned up. Do you want... No, I don't. Nothing. I want to be alone. Just go away. Just go away. What? I... Uh, you're gonna save. Uh, can't see nothing. Uh, oh Lord, uh, this is this is worse than being back in the joint. Uh, uh, Lord, don't let me go blind. Please don't. Please don't. One would have to be situated outside life. And yet to know it as well as... Welcome to the Louisiana State Penitential Facility, son. <laughs> what is your name? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah. <coughs> My name is Warden Biggs. They call me Boss Bigfoot in here. I look after the chickens. That's you, son. Break them in, some say. Others say just break them. <laughs> Heard you stole a helicopter. Now, what's a dumb cracker like you want with one of them? Hmm? Oh, before you get up, son, you might wipe up that tobacco juice there. As all who have experienced it, can we... Are you digging that ditch, or...? No, please. One would have to be situated outside life. Are you please. Digging that ditch, or just standing there admiring it, son? I'm digging, Warden Biggs. Honest, boss. I, Dig I... harder, son. We need a good, deep ditch. If I ever tell you how I come to be here, son, I used to be a preacher. Wasn't never properly priested, you know, hands laid on and all that. But I was touched by the Holy Spirit, and that's the God's honest truth. Now, this is just between you and me. There was this revival church out in the bayou, and the preacher there, why, to my way of thinking, he didn't have the spirit in him at all told me I wasn't worthy to speak in his church. <laughs> now, one day I just hit that man over the head, dragged him out uh, to his own church and crucified him there. And I said, let's see if you can pray yourself down from there, Reverend. <laughs> now, let's see, shall we? That there ditch. I'm digging, boss. 
I'm digging. You stop now. Yep. I reckon that'll make a fine latrine. I reckon I'll try. I didn't tell you to climb out of no ditch, son. That's tough. Seems right comfortable. You men, comfort break. Got a fine new latrine here. Son, I didn't tell you. You gotta to. let me out, boss. I don't gotta do nothing, son. You men, I told you to stay put. <coughs> Permission to hit the warden, boss. Huh? Oh, yeah. so, sorry, boss. Didn't quite catch that. No! <coughs> Where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Buddy? Are you close to me? <laughs> At ease. Come to see the prisoner. Welfare officer. <laughs> I'll knock when I want to be let out. Might be a while. This here boy needs a powerful lot of counseling. <laughs> Well, son, looks like they got you tied down real tight. Boss, I, it ain't fair. Easy, with... son. It's for your own good. They're worried you might take it in your head to harm yourself. <laughs> That's how come they got all these straps and things. This is crazy. I can't even feed myself. What if I need the John or... or Did I... quite a job on me, son. Swung that spade real hard, didn't you? I guess there must be one hell of a lot you need to get off your chest. <laughs> oh, and as for feeding yourself, you don't need to worry. Out of the goodness of my heart, I have volunteered to do that little thing for you. What? <laughs> Stop it! It hurts! Stop, please! There has to be some way of stopping it. Stopping. Is he here? That boy? Buddy? Here in the hospital? Go back in. Find him. No. Yes, you have to or it won't stop. <laughs> Ain't had enough already, son? <laughs> Why, this is good stuff! <laughs> Because if I don't tell him to stop thinking about it... You'll soon enough get a taste for it, son. <laughs> Go back in, Lee. There has to be something. Something you can use. Something. Yes. Yes. <sighs> oh, jeez. Oh, boss. I'm sorry, boss. I didn't mean not to please. Not, not, not. Shh, it's what? all right. You're not in the jail anymore. Not in the joint. You're in the hospital in New York. Something happened to your eye. That's all. My eye. Oh, oh yeah. Them drums are solved. They, oh, whoa, oh, oh, that was bad. I couldn't see. Uh, still can't see nothing. It's dark. Don't worry. They're getting better. The right eye is fine now. I'll lift the bandage. You ain't no nurse. You don't sound... Ah! There. I can't see but a glimmer. Where are you? Here. Hey. You're a kid? What the hell? You've got to stop being so frightened. You've got to. Huh? What? Uh, I guess I was pretty damn scared a while back there. Better now? Uh, I guess. I thought for a moment I was tied down again. It's just a hospital bed. Who are you? Diane Lee Morris. Who are you? Buddy McGowan. Where do you live? 119th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Good. Where do you work? Uh, uh, Kennedy. I'm a service assistant. Cargo. I, I do cargo. And there's nothing to be afraid of. 
No, I, I, I was just having a bad dream. <sighs> What's the matter? It stopped. Huh? I can't hear inside your head anymore. It's been going on all day and all night. You what? Maybe you read about me. There was a big article in the New York Times a couple of years ago. I'm in the hospital, too, over on the other side. Uh, I don't do a lot of reading. What'd they write about? I can hear what other people are thinking. There's only three of us, and I'm the best. But it only comes in bits and pieces. The other one, Eddie, is an idiot. He's older than you and even dumber. Sorry. And then there's Mrs. Lowry here at the hospital. She can only see a bit, but she can come and go. I have to stay locked up. You can hear what's in my head. Not now, but then. The prison and that man, Warden. Bigfoot. What he did to you in that room, cutting your mouth and all those things, those hey, things. Honey, honey, honey. It hurts so much. I had to stop it hurting, you see. Yours was just a dream so I could get honey. down here and wake you up. You ain't locked in, then? I am, but I found something in your mind about how to stop the lock working. Oh, yeah, that old trick, sure, we used to use that back in the pen. Get out of our cells at you night. You see, I could stop you, but there are others. A girl in Costa Rica, and someone in Australia, and a little baby in Hong Kong, Shh. and one on Mars. I can hear them, but I can't hey. get there. I can't stop them. It's okay, honey, it's okay. <laughs> you come down here to wake me up. Yes. Why? To make it stop and, and maybe because of the music, it helped me. This is the first time you ever did anything uh, about, about what, what you heard? It's not the first time I tried. It's the first time it worked. Why'd you try again? I thought it might hurt less if I could get through. And it does. <laughs> Hell, I know I was awful scared thinking I was back in the facility again. I know, so I was scared just the same. Thank you. Thank you, Diane Lee, for making it stop. Do you like it? Huh? The song, Corona, Brian Faust. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it a lot. It makes me feel good. Me too. I think it's so alive, but with life the way it should be. Not without pain, but with pain. Meaning something, so it's almost all right again. Oh, I don't know about that. But I like it. It's good. You know, I almost saw him yesterday. Faust? You almost saw Brian Faust? I was near his liner when it come in. I can get in where they don't let nobody from the public, you see. Because I do cargo. I'd give anything to see him. Just anything in the world. I could have just walked up to the ramp and had a look-see if I'd have thought of it. Of course, if I get out of here in time, I could see him when he goes. I wish I could see him, too. Well, I guess Bim, he's the foreman. If I said you was my sister, he'd let us through. Aren't we sort of the wrong colors to be brother and sister, buddy? Oh, you could be my little cousin, though. Would you take me? Would you really take me? Sure. You did something for me. I don't see why not. If, if they'd let you leave... <sighs> what? Mrs. Lowry, Dr. Gross, they know I've gone. They're looking for me. Mrs. Lowry says she can see where I am. She knows I'm here. Hey, 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 hey. They're coming. They're coming, hey, buddy. Shh. Lee, are you all right? Let me go. You shouldn't be here. Come on. Ow! No. Hey, you, 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 what are you doing with that little girl? I'm taking her back to her room. She's a patient. She should be in another wing of the hospital. She want to go. She's no, very disturbed. We're on, trying to help on. her. We're trying to keep her alive. She has to go back. Buddy! Uh, no violence. Stop that. I'll call security. Wait. Mrs. Lowry, take Lee back she to her room. Please, please wait. Buddy! Hey. Buddy, please. I'm sorry. I'll go to hell. It's for her own good. Please, try and believe that. She really can hear what other people talk. Yes. She has a very special and terrible gift. 
There's so much suffering that she feels, experiences. She's hopelessly suicidal. She just wants, wants to, to get away from it all. When's she going to be cured? I don't know that she ever is. We have no idea what parts of the brain are responsible for her telepathy. We have no drugs as yet that will leave her awake and human, but in some kind of peace. She's going to be like this for the rest of her life. Oh. The quicker you can forget about her, the less likely you are to hurt her. I'm sorry this had to happen. Good night. Good night. And that was that, I guess. I never saw that little girl again. They kept me in the hospital for a week or so, and things slowly got better with my eye. Then they sent me home. Said stay home at least a month, but there wasn't nothing to do, so I went back to work. This was the day Brian Faust was shipping out again after the big tour. Will you look at all them people? Sure is a crowd there. I'm gonna perform before he goes. Hope they don't get no riot. Gonna play? Here? That's what I said. TV and everything. Ben, you reckon I could go down there? What for? So I could see him real close. Why the hell would I you... I got it. There's this little kid. What? Ben! What the hell? Okay, that's what you want. For, for a friend. I gotta do it for a friend. Then he come on, Brian Faust himself, and he began to play Corona. And I was stood there, standing out in the open, nothing at all between us except wind and space. And I was listening, and reckon that somewhere out there, right in the city, in a room in that there hospital, someone else was hearing, through the air and light. And maybe feeling a little less like dying. In Corona by Samuel R. Delaney. Buddy was played by Walter Lewis, Lee by Josie Cook Clark, and Dr. Gross by William Roberts. Lee's mother by Donna Kral, Bigfoot by Bill Bailey and BIM by John Moratis. The dramatist was Mike Walker. The director was Rachel Horan. <laughs>